what makes you the exception. All I wanna do is say Here's a little light of mine That I would never dare to find If you and I didn't collide All I wanna do is say You've taken me by surprise You brought me back to life You didn't even have to try All I wanna do is say Yeah, I'm flying away to the birds in LA And I won't be back 
But I promise to you that the miles in between us will never change. The nights we stayed up, we felt our pain. Turn into love a million times. Won't be enough, so I can't stay. I'ma say goodbye. Missing you is hard to hide, but baby, it's worth the price. All I wanna do is stay with confidence in your eyes. You've taken off my disguise. I'll never leave that behind. All I wanna do is stay. Yeah, I'm flying away to the birds in the lake, and it hurts so bad. But I promise to you that the miles in between us will never change. Yeah, yeah. We stayed up, you felt our pain Turn into love a million times Wouldn't be enough, so I can't stay Feel this music, and I'm really not loving the song. So before anything, let me switch off this to one of my favorite songs. Um, how's it going, everyone? Whoever may be in chat, whoever may be joining um, the recording of this live stream, I'm Chris Arndt. I'm an instructor. And today I'm going to be doing some photo editing. Um, specifically, I have two photos lined up today, which we'll see in a moment. Um, for those who are here, thank you very much for joining. Um, hopefully we get some more throughout the next couple of hours. Um, so on that, let's get started. I'll switch over to display and here we go. So I've got two photos lined up. The first of which, because we're entering spring, because the blossoms, at least in my area, are starting to pop out. Um, I thought I'd edit a photo of some magnolia blossoms that I shot uh, last year about this time. There we go. Turn down the music just a little bit more. As much as I love the song, it's a tad distracting. There we go. I'll turn it up a bit more. There we go. So first we're going to be editing this photo and then I have another photo which uh, I'll quick get to to show you. The other one is in... I want to say this folder. It's hard to keep track of them all. Yes, this is the other folder. I'll be it after a couple of little touch-ups that I did. Um, I'm going to see what I can make out of this guy here. I'm not the biggest fan of you doing uh, uh, light photography. As in long exposure is capturing like darting lights like this. Um, but we'll see what I can do with it. That said, first we'll go with the... Cherry blossoms, once I find it again. There we go. 
So first thing I'm doing is popping this guy up in um, Adobe Bridge, and let's see what we can't just simply edit here. So immediately just adding some contrast here makes a big difference. There we go, bring down the exposure a tad. Let's switch to my mouse so I can do this quicker. I'm going to bring highlights down, that way we have a bit more to play with. Bring shadows up. Bring our whites up a bit. And bring blacks, blacks down a tad. So immediately we have that for before after. Already something a lot more dynamic, something a lot more contrasty which is more to my taste. Um, after that, I'll leave the other functions alone. And I'll leave our vi vibrance alone. So we'll just start with that, see what we can do with this. Also, free th feel free to shout out and chat with any questions um, if you feel like tuning in. For now, let's get started. What I'm going to do is pull my foreground off my background by brightening up my foreground or darkening my back. I'll try brightening the foreground first. So let's immediately make a new layer. Um, actually, let's get rid of that. Get rid of that layer and we'll make a adjustment layer. an adjustment layer for our curves and we'll do a curve upward bringing up our shadows a fair bit and we'll bring down our highlights a tad they don't need to be so so bright the problem with using a tablet for something so precise there we go. We don't need anything crazy. Um, if we turn this layer on and off, you'll see everything's just a bit brighter. So then I'm going to take my mask. I'm going to invert it so we have the original photo. And then I'll draw over that with a, let's see, let's see, a soft, soft round brush, pressure, opacity, and flow. And we need to make sure it's set to white. So when we draw over, anything we draw over is brightened up a tad. So the reason I'm going with a soft brush is because I don't want any of the edges of my drawing to really um, interfere with my background too much. So first, just quick draw over these guys. Get the branches here a bit. And again, I'm pressing lightly, that way we don't necessarily see the edges of what I'm drawing here. There we go. So I like that. Let's turn it on and off to take a look. Nothing crazy, just enough to, to make our front blossoms pop a little bit. I'll do the exact same thing with a... Keep pressing the mask button. Um, I'm going to do another curves layer, but bring everything down a little bit, except our doo -doo -doo. let's not make this quite so dark. There we go. This is flattening it a bit. This adds kind of a gray tint to everything, um, but we'll be dealing with that in a moment. First thing I'm going to do is hold alt and drag my mask up and then get a little prompt on the other screen to replace the mask and then now that the same mask is duplicated i'll just invert it and everything else is affected um, that saves me a lot of the heavy lifting on this and so i'm just going to switch to my black brush and again we're just really worrying about these front flowers so what I'm going to do is press 
Alt and click on my mask to just give us a mask view. And then do a bit of quick painting, add a bit more heavy masking to all this. So again, what I'm looking at right now is just the mask that I applied. Um, the black is the parts that don't have a mask, the white is the parts that do. And so I'm just drawing over that, really accentuating the masking that I did before. I'm not looking for anything crazy. Anywhere that's kind of darker, I really go a lot more on. And anywhere that's lighter, I'm a bit more gentle with. There we go. Let's see what that looks like when we pop out of that mask view. Okay. And if we turn that mask on and off. The only thing I'm not loving is we can see a little bit of a seam in some of this masking. So I'm going to just quick deal with that. So like up here. Just take off that kind of slight edge. Same with here, there's a very fine edge that I'm going to remove. Man, I chose funky for a playlist and uh, this I would not call this funky. This is going ham. I like it, but not quite the mood I was looking for. There we go. So let's see if we group these two layers them off that's our original and then that's our edit so i've added more depth or i'm trying to add more depth to the background by increasing or by darkening it now what i'm not loving is i'm getting a lot of little bits of noise in the violets here so I'm actually going to go to back to my first mask. Select that, make sure I'm using my black brush. And I'm just going to lightly paint, very lightly, just over those areas that are a bit kind of noisy, distorted. Again, I'm being very, very light with this. That's a bit more to my liking. Nothing crazy. So now our big problem is kind of that our background has kind of this olive green hue to it, which is not what I want. What I'm hoping to do, what I'm hoping to get with the final product of this is, let's get that out of the group. There we go. Um, I'm hoping to get more of a Kind of, that's good. Kind of a peacock baby blue thing going on up in here. Then I want to play with the natural color of the, the blossoms themselves. This sort of, oh, there we go. This magenta violet I want to be playing around with in here. Finally, I want to throw some white in here, really pull out these highlights. And then as far as that olive green that I was talking about, I want something not quite so olivey. Um, something more toward the blue side than the yellow side. I'm not, not loving the color I just grabbed here, but um, we're going to play around with that in these negative spaces. And then we'll also throw a bit more baby blue in here. Um, this isn't a hard and fast rule. This is just kind of how I'm breaking up this um, this photo. So the first thing I'm going to do is throw another adjustment layer on. But in this case, I'm doing hue and saturation. Because it allows me to change the hue of everything in the shot. Now 
Now, I'm not getting much blue out of any of this, so I think I'll leave that be. But I can worry a bit more about that green down in the bottom. So, pulling that back up. Um, let's see, adjustment to hue and saturation. Just going to pull that guy off so I can see what's going on. And I'm just going to adjust the hue until I get that green to something instead of this weird kind of brownish green. Let's get it a bit more saturated. I won't add much more saturation. I'm just changing the hue and I'll maybe brighten it a tad with a diff different method than this. This whitewashes it. But for now, let's set that back to zero. Let's set our saturation. I like negative 10. And then we're just adjusting the hue at this point. Let me throw that back on there so I don't lose it. And once again, we're masking. I'm going to invert our mask because the majority of our piece does not need this green hue on it. Um, then I'm going to, with my white brush, where'd you go? There we go. With my white brush, I'm just going to paint over those areas I want adjusted. What's cool about this is if I decide I hate the color, which I'm very quickly deciding right now, um, I can always make adjustments on the fly and it will still only affect the area I'm painting over. So my big issue here is that a lot of this is really, it's very muted, the background. Which is fine in some cases, but I really want to push the envelope on this guy. There we go. Slightly brush over those. Maybe add a tad bit of that green into here. That way it feels like it's actually part of the shot. Add the littlest bit up here. And there. And just a very quick wash over all of this. Because we can't just draw over our main subject area down here. Um, or else it will feel like it's just kind of standing out. Um, kind of out of place. So, next up. Now that we've got that drawn, I'm going to readjust the color. Clicking, there we go. There we go, now I can actually see what's going on. Hmm. So rather than do this method, I'm not loving how it's turning out. Which happens, sometimes you try something, sometimes it doesn't work. What we're going to do is very similar to what I was doing before. I'm just going to draw the color on. Like I'm drawing with a crayon. So the trick here is going to be I can't just I can't explicitly just add one color to everything. It's not going to work. So as I'm coloring in, I'm going to need to shift my color while I draw. So right now I have my mid-tone. Please bear with me. It does look, it doesn't look great right now. It will look better once I apply a few effects. So anything that's kind of mid-tone, not too bright, not too dark. I'm just kind of trying to gently apply this color. There we go. My big goal is that I'm trying not to draw over the flowers themselves. Okay, again, like before, I'm trying to very lightly go over some of this area. Nothing crazy, just, just enough to know it's there. Bit up here, since we got some green. That's all a tad dark, but there are these little mid-tones here. 
here. A little bit over. There we go. Just a tiny bit on that bud. Okay, so now I'm going to take my color and just go like just a step darker. And now I'll go over anywhere that has shadows. Ultimately, it's taking these extra little steps that really make something feel convincing is probably the best word. Um, it also adds time. If you're pressed for time, I don't recommend using um, certain techniques like this. But if you're really trying to change up your photo, this is a good way to do it. there some up here again very light okay then the last step we're going to do oh got a bit there too last step we're going to do is choose a highlight i'm going to go with something a tad more pastel rather than super saturated i just find it works a bit better There we go. Going light up top again. So we're just getting these little flecks of green coming through. Might have to adjust this midtone here. I'm a tad heavy on it. And ultimately, I could do this on three different layers. I'm trying to be a bit quick with this. Um, but what I could do is a different layer for each uh, brightness. That way, if one needs to be adjusted I don't accidentally screw up another one but again I'm being a little bit lazy trying to go a little bit quickly with this um, this is also where we can get creative so I'm going to throw a bit more highlight in here a little bit in here that bit there okay so right now it looks like I just kind of drew a blurry blob on everything, right? So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this layer and adjust how it is laying over my shot. So I'm adjusting its 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 blending method. Um, overlay is pretty good, like soft light should also check what it looks like on my other screen because the resolution is slightly different. I'm going to go with overlay and then reduce my opacity. No, actually I'm going to go. I really like hard light, but it's not quite believable yet. What I'm going to do now is take uh, this layer, apply a filter. I'll be applying blur and Gaussian blur. And if I push it really far, you'll see the colors completely disappear. My goal is to kind of strike a mid balance. That's not half bad. I'll hit okay on that. The only last thing I need to do is I'm just going to go in with my eraser tool on this layer make it so that it's big enough I can actually see what's going on reduce its hardness a tad there we go and I'm just going to make sure that all my flowers are good so like this one has a bit of cleanup to do my goal is to not push my eraser too far over the edge of the flower I just want to get the green out of here because at the end of the day I can't control everything my brush does that's pretty good. That's a nice line there. There's definitely some green in here to clean up. Actually, I'll undo that one. I'll really increase the softness or decrease the hardness of my brush. That way I can kind of work my way in there. Because all of that's already blurry, I don't want to have a hard line. So I want a slightly blurred effect there.
There we go, that's probably good. Doesn't have to be perfect. I just want to make sure that the flowers that are noticeably white stay noticeably white. That's good. Doo -doo -doo. Yeah, I'd say that's pretty good. I'm not too worried about anything else. I'll uh, just quick turn that layer on and off just to double check. But like, look at look at this. So we take this beautiful flower, but kind of a brownish grayish background. And just by adding one layer of color, we give it some, some depth. Looking on, one sec, I'm dragging this over to my other screen. Yeah, I'll buy it. There's a few little things I'd change if I had days and days to, well, hours to work on this, but I, I do want to get through this quickly. I don't love all the erasing I did here. I could probably strike a good balance between the two, but for now it'll do. So then what's our next call we got to make? Well, our next one is we need to add some blues, right? So I created a new layer. So while I'm here, let's call this layer. We'll right click and rename it wherever rename went. There we go. I'll just double click the name. We'll call it greens. So we got our greens. What's next? Let's add in those blues we wanted to add. Yeah. So let's go based on our light green. Let's find a nice light blue we like. I'm going to give it a bit more saturation, but not too much. We want our highlights to be pretty close to white. And I'll push in a bit so it's not quite so green. There we go. That's probably good. Also, uh, like I said before, if you're just tuning in and have any questions, feel free to ask. That's what I'm here for. Let's select layer three. Got a brush going. Uh, let's make the brush a tad smaller. There we go. And I'll zoom in. And we're just lightly going over. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. The blur will really take care of a lot of this. The big thing is we don't want to really intrude on any darker colors too much. Partially because the effect won't show up, but also because it can make our life a bit frustrating. Do, 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 up in here. I'll leave this for some darker tones. I'll just put a couple of streaks of highlight. Get up there. That's a darker tone there. Let's add some highlight here. Also, if you're enjoying what you're seeing, feel free to follow. Um, I'm doing stuff like this eh, pretty much every week. Um, every Wednesday. Um, next week I'm going to come back with a bit of animation just because I've been doing photo editing for about four weeks now. So I want to mix it up a little. So I'll be teaching some animation techniques for uh, motion graphics. But if you're into this kind of thing, I mix it up or I'm going to be mixing it up more and more every week so some weeks will be um photo editing some weeks will be animation some will be video editing my goal is to just kind of give advice inspire you to make the kind of thing you want to make and hopefully i can help accommodate it hopefully i can help give you tips to do that um, okay, so I threw in my some mid-tones. I'm going to go for some darker blues. Again, I'm not trying to push anything way too over the line. You'll note that most of these blues pretty much look the same. 
which is fine. We're not really trying to reinvent where all these highlights are on this photo. We're just trying to accentuate them. Now these areas where it gets proper dark, um, I'm going to leave for the most part alone. I'm not going to like get a dark blue and throw it in there because at the end of the day, these aren't dark because there's a dark piece of sky. There's a bit of branch or something in the way. So to say, well, let's throw some dark blue in there is kind of foolish. There we go. Add a couple little bits of this more saturated blue. Let's see if there's anywhere else I'm missing. Mm. Oh, no, no, I'm going to balance this out a tad. Just go over it lightly. Okay. So again, I did all three of these blues together, mostly because they're also similar. Um, and I don't really have the time to do nine different layers. So I'll go through with you kind of what the different blending effects will do to this. Um, of course, we don't want dissolve. Darken. Um, darken, multiply, anything in this category is going to create a darker effect. Um, whereas lighten and anything in that category will push everything lighter, which is cool. Overlay, soft lights tend to be the best for mixing this kind of thing. Um, what I'll probably do, hard light, not my jam, same with vivid and linear, bit too saturated. After all, that's what we're starting with, right? So I'll probably go, let's see what overlay looks like. Soft light is more my jam. Um, soft light will have this nice effect without making it feel too unrealistic, right? So now the only thing I'm going to do to make it feel less like I drew it is again I'll go up to filter go up to blur and Gaussian blur because these this painting is a little bit more subtle than the green I'm going to go slightly less on the blurring for this and if even still we were like now this is too much blue um, a, we can erase whatever we want, but I'll also reduce the opacity to, let's try 75. Yeah, I like 75. So that's our original, that's our newer one. Actually, you know what? Let's screw the 75. I want more color in there. I'll do 95. So now if we turn both our greens and our blues off, we go from this muddy background into something with a bit more color. The only thing we have left to do, um, and this is going to be a bit more delicate, is I'm going to paint over the highlights with a lighter pink or a white, and I'm going to paint over the darker areas with something more violet. Um, and that'll bring out a lot of... Um, once we once we use a different blending mode, it'll bring out a lot of the little minute details. Um, areas eight three four yes uh, the blue the blue definitely helps. Um, again, once I'm done, not that my drawing is the best, but we're really breaking up the background into these different sections so that we can. Well, the, a photo is all about manipulating what's in the shot, and editing is too, arguably more so. So I'm taking the best parts of different sections and really just punching them up. So let's make another layer. We'll put it under layer one and let's work. Let's work with our, our shadows before we work with our highlights. So what I'm going to do for my color is rather than try to figure out what, uh, what color I need on this graph. I'm just going to directly eye drop from our picture. Um, I'm going to eye drop from one of our front flowers just to give us a bit more brightness. 
and then kind of make it again larger than life really punch it up so I've got this um, just quickly drawing I've got this like nice weird deep magenta um, I'm not sure what you call it but I, I do really like the color we'll use that when we're talking about our shadows here we'll use that for our lighter half of the shadows then I'm going to switch my tool over grab another color I'll grab something a bit deeper there we go we have this darker one it's like a nice shade of lipstick that'll be our shadows hey Stuart good to good to see you in chat how's it going um, okay so where was I um I'm working on the shadows for the flowers in my background and again, I'm just drawing over that area lightly. I'm not trying, not trying to completely destroy the photo. I'm just trying to accentuate the really good bits. So I'm starting by sketching over those pink areas. Going good. Good to hear it. Um, I've been meaning to pop onto your stream, but I've been busy with class prep. It's definitely hard, uh, hard not to notice the notifications. There we go. I might leave this guy because it's a tad brighter. There we go. And because I don't want to... Uh, just been watching an idiot try and explain why a JPEG is better than a raw. Jesus. Um, yeah, I, I can imagine nearly dying laughing at that. I actually just, um, I fixed up a, a photo for a friend of mine. Where was I? Oh, new layer. Um, I fixed up a photo of a friend of mine. Um, it was a form that they needed filled out and needed like six or seven different signatures on it and i guess as it was shared around obviously it, it started to lose its uh its quality and by the time i got it like half the words were just blurs um so i actually had to find the original form and overlay it uh, so that all the signatures were still intact but the original document could be read um it was something else how how would how would someone argue that a raw is worse than a JPEG, or that a JPEG is better than a raw? Either way, raw changed my life, man. <laughs> yeah, fuck knows. Well, to each their own, I suppose. So for any well for all watching uh what i'm doing right now is i'm trying my best not to draw over the uh white too much i'm try only trying to accentuate the pink areas because the white will deal with on another layer ca is in california i assume um very fair oh, bit, bit dark there This song. No, thank you. Yeah, some some people. Some people's children. Um, don't get me wrong. I get having preference. Uh, but there's also... There are objectively worse ways to do things, for sure. There we go. Let's again, since we don't have all the time in the world, I'll lightly go over that. Let's see how this looks once I uh, clean it up. So again, we've got to change our um, blending method. I'm just going to go with. Uh, 
let's go with soft light on this and soft light on the lower layer and then I immediately click overlay soft light well, let's see I might choose something else might use pin light for that one and then reduce the opacity let's try 70 uh, she's like my laptop can't stream and edit a raw file and there's not a lot you can do with raw it's an image it's lifeless not vivid and Yeah, the light, Lightroom and Photoshop at the same time is more than enough to, to bog down your computer. Um, um, but uh, yeah, the the idea of, well, yeah, a RAW is not, not nearly as vivid as a JPEG because you haven't processed it yet. Um, literally just up the contrast and see all the difference that RAW makes. That's all you have to do to immediately determine raw is better never mind the size difference uh layla joining in hey man might not be here too long wi-fi sucks photo looks great thanks um yeah i'm near nearly finished this one uh, my fourth my pin light is not doing much for me let's try overlay Oh, uh, let's see. Ditsy Ghost now hosting stream with one viewer. Thank you, Ditsy. A good friend of mine. Her? Um, yes, thank you for the host. Um, Stuart, on the plus side, only two more days till you order the 7200. I am very, very excited for you. Um, God, I, I'd kill for a good zoom lens at this point. Especially with my filming, um... The zoom is kind of all the difference between me getting like a nice tight shot of like uh, when I'm filming food, especially. Um, it makes all the difference in the world. I don't like lighten. I don't like screen. Actually, I don't mind screen. Yeah, that's what I'll go with. And then I'll lighten on this one. Um... So what I've done is created two layers, um, each of which is just painted over the pinks of the cherry, or the eucalyptus, no, magnolia blossoms in the background. Um, now all I'm doing to them is making it look more realistic. So in this case, first I'm going to do blur on my darker layer. Going to do a lot of blur. Because this guy really likes to... On, where are you? There you are. There we go. And while I'm on this layer, I'm going to. Oh, never mind. That's just a flower. Um, did see when did I take this pick? I took this pick at Niagara Parks uh, last year. Um. Uh, did see happens to be one of the people who went to Niagara Parks with me. Um. No, this is this is from that that fun day, that picnic. Um, I was going to do one of the one of the portraits I took of one of you guys, but I decided to leave portraits on the on the table for now. That was over a year ago. Uh, Layla, you asked, um, what cameras do I have? I only have one camera at the moment. It is a Sony A seven R two, um, mirrorless camera. Uh, it is actually currently my webcam. Um, it is the best decision I ever made with regard to camera equipment. I want to see how this... I've lost track of what this original photo looked like. Okay. I might take this layer and make it darker. Yeah, I'm going to go with soft light and then just blur it. 
uh, filter. We'll do Gaussian blur, but I'll do less blur on this layer. Okay. And then so far, if I group all of those, we have, well, before, as far as color, and after. Uh, so I use the same fam camera to film and take pics. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it's uh, it's a godsend that I'm able to do that. Um, I'm a videographer by nature. So uh, I wanted to make sure I had a camera that, um, that shoots good video. But also, like, my hobby is shooting photos. So I needed kind of a double double threat there um but yeah I, I do hope to get more cameras in my repertoire sooner rather than later um it's really a matter of what i choose to prioritize i'll probably prioritize video but my big expense coming up is more glass more glass so more lenses and um i really need a lighting kit real bad i have one for my stills but I don't have a lighting kit for video yet. Okay, so let's keep working in this group. Adding one more layer, I'm going to go with a real light pink. Uh, actually, I'll steal right from the picture and go with something like... Doo -doo -doo. Nothing's giving me quite the saturation I want. I'll go with something like that. Uh, Layla, hey, I have a question. What's up? Also, uh, ditzy to follow up with what you were saying. Um, yeah, it's it's definitely been time. Um, I hope we're lucky enough to get back to, um, hangouts and hijinks and all of that. Going to art, art crawls and seeing people. It's weird. Okay, that's, that's, um, that's a fairly easy solve. Um... Ditsy is absolutely right, um, especially if you ever want to do video as well. Um, a monopod is incredibly useful. It's a tripod head with only one stick. Um, as well, you should always make sure when you are shooting um, that while you're shooting, just make sure your shutter speed is, if you're shooting by hand, make sure your shutter speed's over... Well, 1 over 60 normally. If you have a really shaky hand, uh, go a little bit higher, like 1 over 80 or 1 over 100. Um, and you shouldn't have, at that point, a blurry shot, assuming you're in focus. Um, yeah, it, it, Stuart is absolutely right. Never never get a shitty, cheap tripod. Um, it makes for more trouble than it's worth. Um, at this point, well, the tripod I'm using is a heavy-duty video tripod, but uh, the company Manfrotto is kind of a standard. Um, they have some of the best tripods in the market, um, but they're not the cheapest in the world. Um, but even just knowing how to shoot uh, manual and knowing what shutter speed settings to use um, can make a difference when you're when you're hand bombing it. Yeah, this was this is a very good chat or chat group to be asking questions like that right now. Um, yeah, that's one thing I'm uh, hope well excited to hopefully do in the near future is actually teach photography, um, or at least the basics of photography. It's one of those things I'm kind of vying for at this point. Let's go a bit of blush in there. Bit of blush in there. Stuart, I, I will admit uh, I do, do not recognize uh, the brand or the model. I assume that's a pretty high quality. Um, 
I'll probably check it out once I'm once I'm done with this photo. Okay, we got this yellow in here that I'm concerned about, so I'm not going to draw over it too much. Get a bit of pink in there. Good. Oh, too far. Get some in there. But I can empathize with the shaky hand thing. Um, I'm less a shaky hand and more like I'm a generally fidgety person is probably the best way to put it. Um, so I can definitely empathize with having to up my shutter speed or use a good tripod. There we go. Let's see how this looks. So we got a bunch of pink drawn in there. Still concerned about this yellow, but I'll deal with that. Um, so once again, I'm going to well, let's try a blending method first. Mm. I like soft light, and I'm just going to clean up a couple of little things. going to go lightly over this yellowy area just kind of really round out the shot that I'm doing so now I'm just kind of cleaning up any loose edges before I throw in some white um, to kind of even out all these flower petals um, Stuart, have I shown you my landscapes? Uh, no, feel free to, um, uh, either drop them in chat or if you do follow me on Instagram, um, feel free to message me with them. More than happy to check them out. No, I had, uh, someone on stream last week, uh, sharing me, sharing a couple of their photos with me, but I don't believe I saw yours. Okay. So that's good, we got a soft light. I'm going to throw a quick blur on this just to kind of blend it in. Nothing crazy. Oh, there. So there's definitely a before and after uh, worthy of being seen um, between are correcting exposure a little bit and then throwing some color in. Thank you, Ditsy. Um, I always appreciate your uh, your enthusiasm for my photo edits. Um, the final thing I'm going to do is essentially all these little highlights that don't change with my added color. I'm just going to add some white in there. Nothing crazy, um, just to give this little pop. The same way the blue I'm gesturing with my hand. I should gesture with my cursor. The same way the blue makes this, this edge of the photo pop, I want to do the same thing down in here. Um, just add these little highlights that really pull some depth out of the background. So I'll actually, I'll leave everything as is, create one more layer, put it beneath layer one. Um, and in this layer, I am just drawing with white. And the reason I'm not doing like a tint or anything like that is because I'm going to be putting white in among the green as much as I will in and among the flowers. And I want it to affect everything equally. So I'm going to make my brush a little bit bigger. Um, I'll leave the hardness where it's at. And now I'm just taking any areas that are highlights and just accentuating them a little bit. Yes, I see. Thank you for the link. I will check it out literally once I'm done this layer because this layer will kind of mark the end of this edit as I have it at least. There we go. So I'm putting some in here. Accentuate that. Bit in there. Literally everywhere that has a highlight and not much color. I can even throw some in other colors that I've created. Like throw a little bit in the blues. Throw it up in 
here, a little bit on here. And again, it right now it's going to look kind of obnoxious and in the way. Um, once I blend it in, it'll kind of work better. Hopefully. That one's a bit much. See, I mentioned earlier that I put on a playlist tagged funky. Now we're into funky. Before it was a bit much. Um, this is my kind of jam. It's a bit chip tuney. <laughs> now we funky. So I'm pulling some. And again, like if all else fails and this layer looks like crap, we can go over it again. So I'm not going to pull any punches. I might as well just kind of drive this home and see how it how it looks. There. There's no sense in doing a crazy colorful edit if you're not going to be crazy and colorful with it, right? The only thing I'm not affecting are my front most flowers, um, the ones that are in focus. For what I think are obvious reasons, I think it's obvious. Essentially, the reason I'm not coloring over these guys is because if I try to blur anything on it, um, you'll have this big blurry splotch um, over what is a crisp flower. Ditsy, you ch you changed colors in chat. Um, wow, it nearly looks like an oil painting in the blurred areas. And that's that's honestly what I'm doing. I'm 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 creating all these different layers, whether of oil or of digital painting, um, and knowing that. Essentially, instead of where an oil painting, you know that your audience is going to stand 10 feet away, and so it's going to naturally blur um, because of people's eyes, we're accomplishing that by applying a blur effect. That way you could get as close as you want to the screen. Um, it's still going to be blurry. So with that, I'm going to make one little change to this guy. There we go. That one's a bit much. There we go. Let's see. Let's see how this looks. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try overlay. I'm going to leave it at overlay. I really want to want to drive this point home. We had a filter. We go to blur. We had Gaussian blur. Um, let's look at zero that way. I'm going to use my mouse for this. Okay, so let's pull it back a bit. There, 33 works. And that's something you really play with. Like, you're not going to just know that number for Gaussian Blur right off the top of your head. You're just going to keep playing with it until you get what you want. So I could spend a bit more time cleaning up the flowers up front. I might in my own time, but um, I definitely want to move on to our second photo. So here, without further ado, is well here I'll, uh, I'll pull up bridge for the before after so here's our before and then our after as far as the edits in photoshop go before still beautiful flowers but the background was seriously lacking and then we improve our background um this is one of my favorite techniques to use for photo editing. It's, it's basically, it's basically painting over your already beautiful artwork, right? Um, you're just taking those things that are awesome and making them even more awesome. Uh, you imagine how they could be and really drive that point home. So with that done, um, I'm just going to really quick uh, save as a Photoshop document. I'll call that um, Blossoms. Then I'm going to, once it saves, oh, there, once I click that, uh, I'm just going to 
quick, change my image size. I just want a version I can throw on Instagram. There. Taking a second because there's a lot of edits. Uh, I need to make sure my profile is sRGB. And then I'm going to save as a JPEG. Just because I'm just throwing this on Instagram. I always have my PSD uh, Photoshop document to go back to if I need to re-edit or put out a better version. So let's get this second photo going. It'll be here. And this one right here. So again, I'm not the biggest fan of these, uh, these light painting photos. Um, this is not my usual forte. Um, but that said, I wanted to see what we could do with it. Um, Arius834 looks beautiful. Thank you very much. Um, I try. So first thing I'm going to do is just play around in camera raw a little bit. Um, really drive home what I want to drive home. So I'm going to bring up my overall exposure and definitely bump up my contrast. Uh, I'm going to bring down my highlights a little bit. Bring down my shadows a tad. Or actually, I'll bring up my shadows. I'll bring down the blacks. And bring down my whites a tad. So immediately, just our before after. All I've essentially done is increase contrast. Um, so that I have a bit more to play with. After that, um, I'll leave the clarity. I'll leave the vibrance and all that. That's not my concern. Um, I'm noticing everything is a bit green. So I'm just pushing it a bit more toward purple. There we go. That's actually adding a lot of depth right away. So now I'll open my image. Let's see what we can do with this. I'm honestly kind of at a loss immediately of what we might do with this. Um, hmm. Let's play with our exposure a little bit. So I'm going to make an adjustment layer for curves. I'm going to really pull down the um, the darks, bring up my highlights a little bit, essentially creating, we don't really have an S curve going on here, but we have more contrast going on. So what I'm going to do now is in my layers, uh, I'm going to figure out what parts I want to be dark like that and what parts I don't want to be dark. Um, well, I love the ground like this. So I think I'll paint everything on the bottom here and then up the side of this building. Uh, definitely makes you miss downtown. Yeah, me too. Um, did you hear, not that you were, not that you're the biggest fan, but um, uh, this ain't Hollywood is closing down, which is, well, for those who aren't from Hamilton, um, those who aren't, uh, local. The St. Hollywood is easily one of my favorite venues in Hamilton. A lot of good memories. Um, but yeah, they they have to shut down because of everything that's going on. Um, wheel in the back almost looks like it's floating. It it really does. It's because of I assume it's because of the blur. Um, there's a lot of cool little tricks that happen in in this kind of thing. Um. Oh no, yeah. I meant to talk to, well, I meant to talk to Sarah. We both know Sarah. Um, about it, just because, well, our friend Sarah has done a lot of music coverage out of there recently. Um, I wanted to know if she knew any more about it. Yeah, it's definitely, uh, well, things are changing. For the better and the worse. But we keep on keeping on. So right now I'm just quickly going over the bus. 
Hmm. This pick, pick makes you want to hear Autobahn and also because I'm sad Florian Schneider is gone. Yeah, speaking of things going away, um, uh, Autobahn, song by Kraftwerk, um, who one of the members, Florian Schneider, um, just recently passed away. Very, very cool band, very good music. Forefathers of a lot of electronic music. Um, let's see. Will be cool to see where all the cards land when this is over. Yeah, I'm very curious. Like as far as things like um, uh, labor movements and like what the workday looks like and working from home, like all that stuff. I'm really curious to see what happens. Um, not going to lie, I'm I'm hating this curves layer. Or more so hating my here. Let's get that back. I'm hating the mask I did on it. So let's I'm not sure what I should do with this. I'm going to try something more composite with this. Try going a little bit crazy. Um, the first thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to flatten this because I don't care. Like I like this nice and dark. Um, I don't care about maintaining anything. And I'm immediately going to crop this because that pylon is throwing me off so much. So let's crop it a little bit wider. I'll take five by seven, whatever, whatever gets that out of my sight. Do yeah, that'll be fine. So normally I would never crop a photo before I start editing. Um, just cause why would I take away part of a photo that I might want later? But in this case, I think I'm going to try something a tad different. Uh, I'm going to take a, another layer, Control alt shift e to get a exact copy of what I see. Then let's see what effects I can throw in here to really to mess it up. Um, I really want to play with the color on it before anything. Noise we don't need, color halftone. I'll leave stylize. Let's do this. Uh, we'll do. I did levels. I want curves. So I'll take a curves adjustment layer. And rather than playing with our uh, RGB, I'm going to play with specific colors. There we go. So then I'm going to, how am I going to do this? Here's what I'll do. I'll uh, merge visible. So now I have two layers, one that's red, one that is not. I'm going to take my red layer and just move it slightly. And then let's change the blending mode to something that does what I want it to do. Um, do, do, do. I had something more like what I wanted. Where was it? There we go. I'll go with lighten. Next up, I'm going to do another layer. 
I'm going to turn off my red layer. Control Alt Shift E. And then apply an effect on this guy. I'm going to go with doo -doo -doo. channel mixer. Let's pull the red out of it. There we go. My goal is to get something that I can layer over one more time. There we go, that's good enough for that. Now if we merge visible, I have a third layer that I can blend. Let's do 50% opacity. Let's do 50 on this one and change its function. There we go. So uh, essentially what I'm doing at this point, I'm really just trying to mess this up in a way that looks cool. Um, I'm kind of going by the seat of my pants uh, as I'm, this is not necessarily my favorite photo. So let's duplicate this layer. There. There's your copy, let's throw it on top. Let's change that to 20. And what can we do with this layer to mess it up? Let's uh, take a look. Uh, what we could do is, where is it? Gradient map. There we go. Don't have any custom gradients. Let's see what I can come up with. I don't like these browns. I want some nice and neon. There we go. Let's go infrared. And then let's, once again, layer copy. Let's move that up to 100. Let's merge visible. And then adjust this guy's to 20. He's at 100, good. Hmm. Still not loving this photo. I can't figure out what I'll do with it. Right now I'm just adding stuff and it's making it more muddy. Um, Arius. Okay, now I want to hear Neon Lights by Kraftwerk. Um, there's a theme with this photo. Yeah, the theme is maybe Kraftwerk, but also me driving myself crazy trying to figure out what to do with it. Um, what I think I'll do... Just seeing who all's uh, who all's in here. What I think I'm going to do is back out to bridge, find something else else that's a bit more inspiring to me right now. Sometimes, at least when I have the luxury to edit my own photos, um, sometimes some photos just don't don't grab me. So let's look at the some um, art battle music contests. Let's see what I got from Art Crawl that I like. More light. You know what? I'll take it. I immediately have ideas for this where I have none for my uh, bus photo. Unfortunately, I shot in um, portrait, but I'll make do. So we'll bump up the exposure a little bit. That way we can adjust his face more. We'll bump up the contrast a tad. Highlights, I don't want to go too high. I don't want to ruin that glow. 
Shadows, definitely down. Whites, definitely. Uh, whites don't really matter in this one. And a bit lower on blacks. We'll leave the colors as they are because I'm going to change this orange hue. Orange hue. Um, in Photoshop itself rather than in Camera Raw. I just saw a uh, follow. Who was it? Um, Tycat Fangirl. Um, thank you for the follow. Um, always appreciate it. Always, well, slowly working my way toward affiliate um, on here. So I always appreciate people who like what I'm doing. So immediately, this doesn't, I don't need to show the top of the phone booth. I'm really digging just kind of this framing here. Um, this is my friend Eric, for the record. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is, well, I'm going to, rather than make a new layer, um, first I'm going to see what I can do with a hue saturation adjustment layer. See if I can change this orange without um, ruining everything. Uh, no. Come on, back to zero. Uh, been watching since he started. Couldn't pop on until he downloaded Twitch. Did see his mom. I figured as much. Uh, th thank you for the follow. Um, and glad you're enjoying the stream. So I'm going to leave my hue saturation adjustment, not my jam, on here quite yet. Um, instead, there we go, let's go to select color range. And I'm going to select, well, let's sample. Oh. Select color range, let's sample. So it's hard to see exactly what I got here. My big goal is to grab all the orange. There we go, let's start with there. And then use plus. And grayscale, that way I can see it better. about right oh I see what's up that was dumb I made a layer Color select is not working. Color range is not working. So we'll come back to that. Let's get nice and close with this. There. You ever have one of those days where you're just not all that inspired? Um. I suppose what I'll start with is a curve layer. There we go. So now I'm just drawing over him with white. Add my new curve. No layer selected, okay. There we go.
There we go. Your blossoms were pretty inspired. Maybe it's used up. Perhaps. Um, and I, I might call it an early stream if this photo doesn't go too far. Um, never know. Some days, just not feeling it. And it's not exactly something I can just, uh, well, just keep going with, right? Some days the creative energy is no, just not quite there. But let's see what I can do with this photo before I uh, throw in the towel on anything. Okay, added that curves layer. Let's try again with that hue saturation. Or color balance. Hmm. Maybe. Before I do that one, let's do a hue saturation. Let's get this orange off of him a tad. What color looks good on him? I'm just going to push it blue for now. Yeah, that should work. So. We'll start with the blue. And then we'll go into our color balance. Throw that on top. There we go. I'm literally just going to throw these layers, keep throwing them on top of each other until I get kind of this color balance that I'm that I like. Now I've essentially created like a weird split tone within the photo, which is cool by me. It's just a matter of getting the color that works best for it. It may be turning off that contrast. Let's try that. Let's try playing around with this. So now what do we do? Um, there's a few things we can do here. First thing I'm thinking is we take a stamp visible. So control alt shift E like I was doing with the bus. And then we move it over. We reduce its opacity to, let's say, 50. Then we realize it would be better to move it over the other way. I should be able, yes, I can adjust it with my keys. Okay, cool. So, I really like this layer as it exists. I like this yellow and purple, right? Um, so I've created one. It's on top. Let's go back to hue saturation and adjust the layer below to a different color. Let's turn off the top layer first. So if we got yellow on his face in the first one, I'm going to go and just push it a bit further with a, I won't go with the red too close to the original. Let's try the purple and green. I 
So now we've essentially what we've what I've unintentionally stumbled into was a RGB split, um, which is to say um, one layer of my RGB, in this case my green and purple, is split on both sides like a 3D effect, um, which is cool. But if I'm going to do that, I'm tempted if tempted to go with something a bit more traditional. Get myself to a red and blue. There we go. Then we take the top layer and we'll increase it to uh, 75. Actually, do another stamp visible. Control Shift E, and then make one final adjustment to give us our third option, which would have been. Let's see, we got blue and red. We got yellow and blue. I'm looking for the green and purple. There we go. So this will be our third um, stamp visible. Now what I'll do is actually turn off all those effects. That way at the very bottom we have the original photo. Then we're going to layer each of these at, let's layer them at 35. Let's layer that one at 35. And that one at 35. And depending what we have on top or how we blend these, um, in this case, I'm going to go cancel. Every once in a while, that thing hears me, and I don't know what it heard that triggered it. But who knows? There, are linear dodge add, linear dodge add. So now I just kind of play around with these options until I find something I like. I definitely want the split toning. That's the funkiest, but... Right, I'm going to go soft light on all these. You know what, I don't like that. I'll go normal on each of these. And rely on kind of pushing these layers in different directions. There we go. Thank you. 
So at this point, just because I'm tr trying to get to something that I like, and I think I'm just about there. Um, at this point, I just have the option of how I want to finish this photo. Um, I've got these layers that I really like. Um, it's just a matter of what's turned on and what's turned off. If I have them all on, I have this kind of disorienting um, mess of photo, which in some ways is great. Let me try this. You know what? I'm digging this kind of rainbow effect, so I'm going to... Um, Play with a version like this and then also choose a version with just two colors that I really like. Um, and see how, well, each one of these is a photo in and of its own right. It's just a matter of which we prefer. I'm definitely going to quick export the rainbow one. So I'm going to file save as... I'm going to Photoshop. I'll call this um, Rainbow Eric. Save. Um, then with all the layers turned on, I'm going to go to, to, to do image size. Oh, sorry. Since I'm playing with a uh, what will become a JPEG at this point. Let's let's figure out how I want to crop it. I'm going to go with the Instagram Classic, um, Instagram's favorite vertical crop, um, four by five. And then now we navigate the next mess of where the hell do I crop this photo? So I'll try that. And let's see what it looks like. Crop it in a little bit more. I want to keep this one yellow face right on the rule of thirds. Yeah, I dig it. There we go. I'm going to edit, convert to profile, sRGB. That way the colors stay nice and pretty at the end of all this. And then we're going to save as Rainbow Eric um, JPEG. Save it. I'm actually not hating the bus as it is this way, but I'll leave that for now. Um, what I'm going to do now is go back to file. Um, or sorry, I'm going to close this image. I won't save changes to the Photoshop. Um, let's reopen Rainbow Eric PSD. There we go. Um, let's see. Uh, I think you need the words. I agree. I don't, I don't necessarily feel I need all of them, but they definitely add to the effect. Um, and so now I have the rainbow version that I really like. Um, let's play with some other versions so we can crop it. Yeah, 
there we go. Let's see what colors we want or don't want. Um, shout out if you have any preference. I'm going to try, that one's whatever. That one's cool. I like this one, but I'm going to increase the opacity on it a tad. Not 45. I want to make both equally apparent. So 35 seems to be kind of the sweet spot. So now I'm going to do the exact same process. Um, image size. I didn't do image size on the last one, did I? Oh, well, I'll fix that after. I always do one. F um, do, do, do. My scratch disc is full, so my preview keeps screwing me over. Um, and do, do, do. Forget width is going to be 1080. There we go. So when I do a four by five, um, what I tend to do if I'm doing it for Instagram or whatever, if I'm just doing a JPEG that I might share with someone, um, I tend to go with a resolution of 150 pixels per inch and then I just make my shortest dimension 1080 um, so in the case of this it'd be 1080 by 1350 XY yeah so I hit OK and yeah my scratch discs are full so uh, it's not going to uh, behave right now unfortunately um, but I'll definitely get some different versions of this created and, uh, posted somewhere. That's for sure. Um, I'm just happy with this, this final edit. Just, it, it gives me sort of a, um, uh, what's his name? Um, Andy Warhol kind of vibe, a bit of a pop art kind of feel. Um, so we'll definitely see what I can come up with and I'll probably share them on Instagram or on um, some sort of platform. I'll figure it out. Uh, but with that, I'm going to switch back to cam for now. There we go. Uh, not too many people still sticking around. We definitely had a good chat going on for a while. Um, but uh, with that, we have two uh, pretty awesome photos that came out of this stream. Uh, like I said earlier on today, for the record, this is me kind of winding things down. Um, my stream next week will likely not be a uh, photo editing chat and chill. Uh, doo -doo -doo. There we go. Sorry, I just got a pop up on my computer. Um, there. So, uh, yeah, next week will most likely not be a chat and chill. It'll probably be something closer to a uh, tutorial. I'm hoping to do a uh, slightly shorter stream where I um, go over how to create some sort of nifty, neat little like motion graphics animation. Uh, the kind of th think kind of thing I do in a lot of my video work. Um, so I'm going to try that out, see how it how it jives with people, see if everyone enjoys it, um, and probably pretty much for the next this next month I'm going to be trying different types of streams to see what people enjoy. Um, so I might do a graphic design one, I might do a video editing stream, um, hell, I might even do a uh, stream where we just chill and maybe I go through my my equipment bag um, who knows I'm going to brainstorm some ideas and come up with them uh, let me know if you have any ideas uh, feel free to message me directly I think you can do it on twitch or my Instagram's right above my head um, feel free to message me on Instagram uh, I believe uh, DMs are open on there 
Um, but with that, uh, let's see. Thanks for sharing. Amazing to watch the creative process. Thank you for joining me. Um, I'm always happy to have people checking out not only my work, but um, just this kind of thing. Uh, the creative process, as it were. Um, that's what this entire channel is all about. So with that, um, once again, thank you for joining me. Um, I hope you all are staying safe and uh, keeping yourselves busy. Um, looking out for not only your physical health, but your mental health right now. Because um, at the end of the day, we're all going to get through this. Um, and I hope to see you after everything's over. Um, just as much as I see you guys on here now. So with that and without me getting too sappy, um, stay safe, stay informed about what's going on, and wash your hands and social distance, please. Have a good one, guys.